Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update. The Democratic Party has created a firestorm of controversy over the wording of the Israel plank in its 2012 party platform, which differs from the 2008 DNC platform with four glaring omissions. In 2008, the Democratic platform specifically described Israel as America's, quote, strrongest ally in the Middle East, called for the isolation of Hamas until it renounces terrorism, recognizes Israel's right to exist and abides by past agreements, defined the Palestinian right of return, referring to mean refugees would immigrate to the new Palestinian state and not to the state of Israel, and made the unequivocal commitment that Jerusalem is and will remain the capital of Israel, which should remain an undivided city accessible to people of all faiths. These were four major principles of the Democratic Party's stand on Israel in its 2008 platform. None of them appear in the DNC platform of 2012, which has created the political firestorm of criticism from many in the Jewish community, including, of course, the Republican Jewish Coalition. Shalom TV asked the DNC to explain why it rewrote the Israel plank of its platform, omitting the pro-Israel statements, which the Democratic Party embraced in 2008. In response, Shalom TV President Rabbi Mark Golub received a call from Marie Harf, a DNC campaign spokesperson familiar with the foreign policy planks of the platform. Ms. Harf explained that this year the party platform focused on President Obama's, quote, unprecedented record, of support for the state of Israel and reiterated the DNC position that the platform makes clear that the president seeks peace between Israel and the Palestinians and that he firmly believes that any Palestinian partner must recognize Israel's right to exist, reject violence and adhere to existing agreements. When Rabbi Golub asked Ms. Harp why the president's record could not simply have been added to the pro-Israel statements that were in the 2008 platform, Ms. Harf observed that nobody can read that platform and come away thinking the president has been anything less than a steadfast supporter of Israel, as his record of unprecedented support for our ally over the past three and a half years shows. Several Jewish groups have expressed strong condemnation of Tuesday morning's attacks in Israel on a Trappist monastery outside Jerusalem. The Latrune Monastery's front door was set on fire and hateful anti-Christian graffiti was spray-painted on the building's walls, as well as the names of several illegal outposts, including the just-evacuated Migron outpost, leading police to suspect that extremist Israeli Jews were responsible for the attack. The Anti-Defamation League's National Director Abe Foxman released a statement in response to the attack saying, we stand in solidarity with the monks of the monastery against this heinous act of religious intolerance and hate. Further saying, we appreciate the strong condemnation of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his call for the perpetrators to be severely punished. The Jewish Council for Public Affairs also condemned the incident, calling it a disgusting attack on the Christian community and democratic values. JCPA President Rabbi Steve Guttow said, we join with the Patriarchate and the Israeli government in standing with our Christian friends and condemning this violence. Further saying the hatred by a few will not erode the relationships among all communities, religious or ethnic, that make Israel's open democracy so strong and admirable. Israel's Prime Minister, Defense Minister and Foreign Minister strongly denounced the attack on Tuesday, with Netanyahu saying freedom of religion and freedom of worship are among the most basic foundations of the state of Israel. U.S. State Department spokesman Patrick Ventrell also condemned the monastery vandalism, saying such hateful, dangerous and provocative actions are never justified. The JTA reports that Berlin has become the first of Germany's 16 states to declare circumcision legal. The declaration follows a local court ruling in Cologne in June that stated that circumcision was tantamount to bodily harm and was a criminal offense. Berlin's legalizing of circumcision, however, only authorizes doctors and not moils or ritual circumcisers to perform circumcision. National legislation is pending to legalize circumcision throughout Germany, and this could authorize moils as well. Berlin also is requiring that parents be informed of the procedure's medical risks before consenting and that doctors do everything possible during the procedure to reduce pain and limit bleeding. 
The Cologne ruling had led many doctors in Germany to stop performing circumcisions to avoid prosecution. Two rabbis in Germany had criminal charges brought against them over the last few weeks, one of which has been dropped. And finally, award-winning Jewish lyricist Hal David has died. The Oscar and Grammy-winning songwriter died as the result of a stroke on September the 1st. David was best known for the many hits that he wrote with composer Burt Bacharach, like Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, I'll Never Fall in Love Again, I Say a Little Prayer, What the World Needs Now, and many others. David and Bacharach were awarded the 2011 Gershwin Prize for Popular Song, bestowed by the Library of Congress, the first time a songwriting team was given the honor. Hal David is survived by his wife Eunice, two sons, and three grandchildren. He was 91. And that's Shalom TV's news update. I'm Tisha Bader.